Hello, everyone, and welcome to Insights at Dee Dee Lynn Designs. This is Dee Dee Lynn, and I am so excited to share tips, tricks, and super cool techniques to accelerate all of our journeys in the ancient art of wire. Before we get started, if you really like my tutorials, I'd really appreciate your comments and feedback, and please hit that subscribe button below. So here's what I'm excited about sharing with you today, and this is called a hinge clasp. And the weave pattern on this, I did a tutorial on um, a couple of days ago, several, last week maybe. So if you're interested in this awesome weave pattern, check out that tutorial. This is a man's bracelet. And what we're going to be doing is creating a hinge and that piece of wire is going to go through this loop in the bracelet. And it's almost like a swivel. It's really, really cool. So we're going to be making a hook and clasp using the hinge technique. So if you're ready, let's get started. So what I'm using here is just some scrap wire. Wasn't in the mood to start another bracelet. So what we'll be doing is taking a piece of wire and sliding it through the loop to create the hinge. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our clasp. And this is what's a clasp. And this is called your hook. And specifically for beginners is why I'm going to be more detailed because when I started out, my brain and hands were moving in two different directions. And if I can encourage beginners to do anything is to watch technique and then go off on your own. Do what works for you, but really watch all those wire artists out there sharing their techniques because it really will accelerate your journey in this ancient art of wire. And for those of you that don't know anything about the ancient art of wire, it dates back before the Phoenicians. And they didn't have the myriad of tools that we have to make unbelievable, beautiful pieces of wire art jewelry. So I really encourage you to check out the history on the ancient art of wire. So here's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to take a piece of wire. And by the way, the gauge that you're using. So on this bracelet, I use 12 gauge half round on the outside, 16 gauge round on the inside because I wanted it nice and strong and sturdy for the man that will be wearing this bracelet. And for the inside hinge wire, I used a 14 gauge half round. So on this particular piece, I'm going to be using a um, 20 gauge. And in reality, because this is 18 gauges, I would be using an 18 gauge wire to go through that. But just for the sake of the tutorial and showing you how to do it, it's not what I have. It's learning what we're doing. So I'm going to take this piece of wire, which is square, and it's all scrap, so it's going to be a little dent and dinged, but that's not what we're paying attention to. And in order for me to understand the kind of width I'm going to need on my clasp, I determine that by measuring my piece. So I'm going to measure the width of this, and this is a little less than a half a centimeter. So I know that this third loop, and these are called six-step pliers for beginners, looping pliers or bail-making pliers, I'm going to start with the third loop, and all I'm going to do is take my wire, let me turn my pliers around and I'm going to find center and I'm going to bring my wires together. And then I'm going to take this off and I'm going to line this up with the loops on my bracelet. So I know that that is a little wide. So all I'm going to do is just bring it in. And I'm going to get my flat nose. Where are those? And I'm just going to gently bring in 
this U-shape just a little bit at a time. And everything in wire is done in general in little small movements and in increments because we want to tell our wire where we're going. And let me adjust my camera because I find myself moving away from it. So now I'm going to line this up again. And that's still a little wide. So here we go again with some more adjustments. And I'm going to start from the top of my U-shaped loop. And I'm going to bring that in on the top. And the reason why I'm starting on the top is, is because it's going to bring the wires in closer, running lengthwise. So little increments. And this is going to be my clasp. And I'm going to line it up again. And we're getting closer. Still a bit of a gap for me. So we want it pretty snug. So all I'm going to do is start from the top again, squeeze that in, and I'm holding the legs of the wire firmly with my thumb. So I'm going to go ahead and squeeze that in a little bit more. And I'm going to line it up. And that's perfect. See how it's snugging up against there? So now you just want to determine how long you want your clasp to be. And sometimes based on bracelets that we're making, if we ran out of length and we needed to, uh, meaning ran out of length, in the bracelet. So let's say this is a nine inch men's bracelet and I made it eight inches or seven and a half inches. Then all you're going to do is make your clasp longer to compensate for the length that you're going to need between your hook clasp and your clasp itself. Okay. That's a little tip there. So now what I'm going to do is determine the length of my clasp, and that looks pretty good to me. You don't need a lot. All you need to do is get your hook through here. But it depends, again, on the design that you're making. So what I'm going to do, and this is important for beginners, and I didn't really know how to measure everything from the beginning, from the beginning of my wire art journey, and that was about two, almost two years ago. It'll be two years the end of March. So... <clears throat> How I'm going to determine where I need to mark my wire to create my hoop is going to be based on where this loop is here, okay, running through my bracelet. So I know that I'm going to make my mark right here. And that mark that I'm making is based on where that loop is ending, okay? And I'm going to do that same thing on the other side. So here's pretty much what you should have. I need to mark this one on top. So now, based on the loop size that you made, and this is important, so here's what you should have with your clasp. I'm going to set that down for a minute. <clears throat> on my bail making pliers, I use the second loop size, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So as a minimum, I would recommend any time you're going to make a loop for a clasp, it should be at least the second bail or loop on your six-step plier, and for beginners, these are called six steps. And how I know what the millimeters are, and I think this might be three, but you need a minimum of two millimeters. This is a three millimeter loop. And if you don't have this little millimeter, centimeter, inch measuring tool, uh, I think it's an important thing to have if you're going to be in this art. 
So I know that I made a three millimeter loop. You want at minimum, when you're making loops, at least two. Because you're going to be putting something through that, right? Okay, so just wanted to share that little tip, trick, and technique with you. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a loop to match the loop hole size I have on my bracelet loops. And I know that that's three millimeter based on that I use this size to make the loop in my bracelet. So how do I determine how much length I'm going to need? A lot of it is eyeing, but in general, I know that I'm gonna need about a little less than three quarters of an inch. So on my measuring board, I'm going to measure down from this mark three quarters of an inch. And if it's a little too big, we can always cut it. We can always make little corrections. So I'm going to go ahead and lay my wires down. You can't see this part. And I'm going to mark the three quarter of an inch line. I'm on my way back. So here's what we have. And I'm going to cut on the outside of that line. Oops, that's not my line. Oh my gosh, that's the, <laughs> that's the mark I made to where I want my loop work to, to come into. So I'm going to cut right here and right here on the outside of that Sharpie mark. So now I'm going to make my loop. And I know that I used my three millimeter bail making loop plier thingamajiggies here. So I'm going to roll away from me. And here's a tip for beginners. When you're putting your wire in between your pliers, whether you're using uh, round nose pliers like this, or loop bail making pliers, you want to make sure that you can't feel your wire. You just want it right flush in between both the barrels, okay? You don't want to feel it. Then I'm going to support my clasp firmly and I'm going to roll that wire back and then I'm going to adjust my grip, roll it back again, and then I'm going to turn my hand around and I'm gonna come in from the other side just to make it easy for me, and I'm gonna roll it back. And if I have to, I can always take my flat nose and I can just tuck that loop in. And make it flush. Against the base of this wire. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And this time I'm gonna roll it towards me because this is in the, the right, this is in the side that works easiest for me because I'm working with myself, not against myself. So again, I'm gonna place my wire and make sure I can't feel it. And then I'm gonna roll it and I'm holding my class steady. Now something I forgot to mention, you wanna make sure that you hammer your clasp before you make your loops. If you forget, you can still hammer them. Now I'm gonna get my flat nose and I am going to tuck those in. And the reason why you want to hammer it is to harden your wire so that clasp doesn't lose shape. So you should have something like this. And all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna straighten my wires out. Just make sure they're nice and straight, that my loops are even, and that's what we're looking at. So now, and what I meant by hammering everybody, and especially for beginners, if you notice the wire right here is flattened. This was round and this was 16 gauge wire, and I hardened the clasp where that person that's wearing it is going to be taking it on and off, and I don't want it to lose its shape or bend. And additionally, I flattened my hook. 
So I would do that now for you, but my uh, hammering block is in the garage. I have to move my position here. So just assume that I hammered this end. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up my clasp with my bracelet loops to make sure that everything lines up. And that looks pretty good. Looks like matching loops to me. And so here's where we're going to slip through our hinge. And I've cut a one inch piece of wire. I know I'm not gonna need that much, but I need some working length. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this back with my flat nose. And I'm gonna tell you how much, about a centimeter. Okay, don't need that much, but I need working room. So I'm gonna put my pliers right here where I know the centimeter mark would be if I marked it. And I'm going to push my plier, not my pliers, push my wire up and over the tip of my flat nose. Okay. So I have something like this. And then I'm going to adjust my pliers. Because I really want this square. And then I'm going to put my pliers back in over the top of the bend where it's flush against the bend. And all I'm going to do is bend it down. And you should have something like this. All we're doing is making a hook. And you make the hook any way you like. Now I know that that's going to be too long. And I'll show you what I mean. But again, we need to be able to have, you know, excess length to be able to work with our wire. So I'm going to line up my clasp and you want to make sure that your hook is on the bottom and I'm going to slip it through. And do you see what I mean by a lot of wire? <laughs> and that's only an inch, right? So I know that that is too long and I've also, and this is good that this happened, I also noticed that my gap is a little too tight. So I'm going to slide this out. I'm going to take my round nose and I'm just going to open up that gap a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to push that nose down. I'm going to get my flush cutters. Oh, and by the way, I'll put a description for these flush cutters down below, and I'm going to cut over half that length off, okay? So these flush cutters are probably the most inexpensive ones I've ever bought. They're high steel gauge. I've almost into them now for two years. My blade isn't cut into, and I can tell you I've bought very high-end cutters that the blades started getting cut into. I've even cut 16 gauge wire with these that I don't recommend. You're better to use what's called super flush. You see the difference in these? Now these babies are designed to cut 10, 12, eight, whatever you wanna use. When you're using any gauge wire greater than 18, I would recommend using a super flush. But these things are the absolute bomb. So I'll put a link down below. I think they're about 11 right now. And, uh, you know, give them a try. They're just awesome. Super sharp, very tiny tip. Okay, so let's get on with it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my hinge back inside of my bracelet loop. And again, you want to make sure that your hinge hook is on the bottom. Now I want it to hit center. And since there's only three wire loops here, I want it, meaning in the bracelet, there's a total of five. So I want this to hit dead center in the third 
loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that again. And I'm just gonna take a little bit off. So that looks good to me. And then I'm gonna take my bent nose or you need to use uh, your petite and uh, petite chain nose or needle nose. And I'm going to just give this a little snug down. Need to line it up so that I can get my pliers inside of that loop and I'm using it as an anchorage and leverage. And then I'm just gonna push that wire down, but I'm not gonna totally tighten it yet, just so that I have more working, oops, and that happens a lot, by the way, it's gonna slide out, more working room. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide my hook through here again. It's fiddly. Just got to be patient. I don't think I could have pulled this off as a beginner. So if you do this as a beginner, please let me know. Um, and I'm talking about maybe two months of bend and wire. Uh, my hat off to you, really. So right now it's a little fiddly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it firmly. I'm going to get my needle nose pliers. I'm going to come on the outside of that loop. You need a little bit of a gap, and I'm going to swing it up into a 90. So this is about what we should have right now. Okay. Now all you're going to do is you're just going to bend this. You want to keep your wires lined up, and it's a bit fiddly, as I said. and you're gonna bend this over. You see that? Then, this is about what you should have going on right now. Then I'm going to trim this wire to line up with the other one. So I'm gonna turn it around in a working position for me so that I can see where I need to snip it and I'm going to get my flush cutters and I'm going to line it up with this other wire. And I'm gonna snip it. Now, you gotta work in your own, you know what I mean? It's a working position for each of us, so find what works for you. Now I'm going to get my nippers, not my nippers, my pliers, and I'm trying to hold this down, <laughs> but it's just a little floppy on me today. I did a bunch of these over the weekend, and all I'm doing is pushing this wire inside of the loop together so I have an anchor and pushing it in and down. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I have much more stability now since I've pushed this side down. I'm going to get my pliers inside of that loop and now I'm going to snug the other side down. And then I'm just going to line them up. And another little squeeze for good measure. And turn it around again. And another one right there. I'm going to line up those two arms. And that's what you should have. Isn't that cool? So it's kind of like a swivel hinge clasp because it literally swivels. It's really, really cool. I'm just gonna slide this down to the back. Did you see what I did with my fingernail there? I slid this down 
to the back. I'm going to do it again of this loop. There we go. And now I'm going to give her another little snuggie. And this is the reason why you need really tiny needle nosed pliers so that you can get inside of your loops because it's really helpful to have that anchor there. And I'm just going to give it another squeeze. So there is our hinge clasp. Cool, huh? as you saw here on my bracelet that I finished. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to make the hook. And it's the same technique. So I'm going to use my bail making pliers and this time I'm gonna use, instead of the third step, the second step. And it's the same thing. I'm going to find center of my wire. And with my thumb and index finger, I'm going to push those wires together to make a loop. Then this would be your moment that you would go and hammer just the first section of your hook clasp so that you work hard in it and it's nice and strong. And now I'm going to line this up to the other side and that's about the perfect width. Probably could have did that on the other side but I used the third step but that's okay because so, we learned the technique of how to narrow the width of something and make it fit. So now I'm going to determine where I want my clasp. So I need to fold this over first. And the way that there's different techniques of doing this, but this is mine. And the way I'm going to determine how much I need to bend back from this loop here is where I want my hook to finish. Meaning if I want my hook you don't need a lot of hook, by the way. So if I want my hook to stop, meaning right here, I normally kind of line it up on the top of my clasp so I know that I don't need my hook any wider than, and I'll tell you how wide I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it about a half a centimeter. So you might want to mark this. So let me give you an example. I'm going to mark my hook at a half a centimeter from the top of the loop. And I'll show you here in a minute. So I know where I'm going to bend it back. Okay? So here's my clasp. Here's my hook. It's going to be my hook, right? So I'm going to bend this loop back right above that mark. So I'm going to get my flat nose pliers and right above, and actually you guys, I think I'm going to do one arm at a time, right above this mark. So let's go ahead and use the, the tip of my flat nose right above my Sharpie mark, I'm going to fold that wire back and straight up. Okay. You want to make sure that you leave a gap or you're not going to be able to get your hook in your clasp. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now remember, you've already hammered this tip because you can't hammer it once you fold your wire back. So I'm going to do the same thing right above that Sharpie mark. I'm going to fold this wire back. Okay. 
So this is what we should have. That's gonna be our hook. Now, another tip. If that part of it is too wide, which it is, okay, we need the width in order to lock in our hinge with it, right? But we don't need the width on the hook, right? So all we're gonna do is hold very firmly here on the legs of our hook, and we're going to squeeze in at the top very slowly, just a little bit at a time. Then I'm gonna turn it over, do the same thing on the other side, because I wanna keep my width down here, which is why I'm holding those legs so firmly. And then I'm going to squeeze in on my loop. So let me get my hands adjusted. But I'm holding the legs really firmly. And I'm squeezing at the tip of the loop. Let me see if I can turn this around so you can see what I'm talking about. See how it's already coming in that tip? So I'm squeezing, holding the legs super firm and squeezing at the top or the tip of my loop. Now I'm going to see if this slides through and bingo, it does. So that's what we got. Now you can have it slide down Depends on the look you want. On my man's bracelet, I had it facing up. And the reason why I did that is I really like the look of that. And I thought it would be kind of a cool look for a guy where if he wanted to wear this on the top of his wrist, it would just give it an interesting design element. So I'll show you what I mean. This bracelet is way too big for me. I could wear it as a cuff. <laughs> but um, so this is what I mean so this just created a really cool design element if the gentleman that was wearing this wanted to wear the clasp and hook link on the top of his wrist versus the bottom so he could either have it this side or this side so another cool tip so I'm going to do the same thing here I'm going to have this as a design element, so I'm gonna have my hook on top. So now I know, and this is what I mean by length. Do you see what I mean? If your hook is too long, everyone, let's say, for example, you made that a centimeter long, it would have to start back in here, which would make it very difficult to hook in. So you wanna make sure that your hook is long enough to get in and support the closure, but not get in the way of the clasp. So now I know that I need to make my loops and, and I'm going to determine that by lining up and these are actually almost the perfect length. I probably won't be cutting much off of this because I need to make two loops down here. And what I mean by that is that you have to have a gap between your hook and the space between your hook in order to loop it in. So you have to have a gap between your legs and your loops or your, your hook. I'll show you what I mean will end up being too close to your loops. So you have to have enough length to create your loops, which I will have perfect length there. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my end here. And I'm gonna make my loops. So I'm gonna get my bail making pliers And remember, for beginners, you don't want to feel your wire, okay? And I'm going to adjust my wrist. And I'm going to bring 
that loop in. And this is almost too short a wire. I might have to redo this. We'll find out here in a minute. But it's the purpose of this is to learn this technique. You, based on the gauge of wire that you're working with, will need you will need to determine how much length you will need and based on the loop sizes that you're working with. So this might be a little short, but maybe not. Now I'm going to straighten my wires and widen them out because remember, I need that space and the gap. I'm just pulling them apart and I want to make sure that my wires are ni nice and straight. I keep dropping this. I don't want them bowing in. So now I'm going to line this up against my loops. And do you see what I mean by the gap? So in reality, my legs weren't long enough. I should have had two and a half inches of wire for my clasp, my hook clasp, and I had two. So I'm going to go ahead and cut two and a half inches of square wire and do it again. So here's my two and a half inches. I'm going to clean up my ends, even though I'll probably cut off some excess. I'm going to get my bail making pliers and I am going to use the number two. I'm going to I for center. Beginners, I would highly recommend you get your Sharpie and you measure. Make your life a lot easier. And I'm going to bring these two wires together. Then as before, I'm going to line it up with my loop and I know that that's perfect. I'm going to take this outside and hammer just the tip. Okay. And then I'm going to see how much length I need for my hook. Okay. So I'm going to do a half a centimeter. So I'm going to mark this at the half a centimeter from the top of the loop. And on the inside of that mark, I'm going to get my flat nose. And I'm going to bend that wire back and straight up. And I'm just thinking I didn't cut my, <laughs> oh boy. Well, you guys know where I'm going with this, so. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, right above that mark. I'm gonna push that wire with my index finger. I'm gonna turn it over and bring it around the back. Okay, so I'm thinking my wire's too short again. Just cleaning that up. I don't know how I got myself in such pickle. Go figure, you're doing a video and I need to roll that down a little bit more. I'm just lining up that top there so that they're even across the top. And all I did was grab the back of the wire, push up on the loop, and roll that wire down. And I think I want to do it a little bit more. Okay. So now I know I need to tighten my 
hook so that it fits in my loop. Working right off the tip of that loop right there. Then I'm going to see if it fits. And it does. But I'll make it a little bit more narrow. There's a little bit of width on there that I felt catching on the inside of that clasp. So all I'm going to do is just squeeze her together a little bit more. And I'm going to straighten this up. Perfect. Now I'm going to flatten this down a little bit. There's an awful lot of gap in there. So what I'm going to do is just grab this and very gently squeeze it against itself as I'm holding the legs firmly. Make an adjustment here on top to line those two legs up. And everything in wire for beginners especially is in little subtle increments, small movements. Just doing a little straightening. Lots of eyeing. So I'm thinking this wire is too short again, but that's okay. I'm going to make it work. I'm just cleaning up my end. And I think how I'm going to do it this time is I'm going to roll the wires. See, I'm compensating. So I'm going to roll my wires on the back instead of the front. So this is good that all of these little things are going on because it's more instruction on how to work with your wire in the event things come up that you have to change. And if I was making a bracelet, I would totally have remade this. I would have just measured out my wire correctly. Now this is an awkward side for me. So I'm going to have to switch positions here in a second and roll away from me, which I personally don't like to do. So I'm going to gently roll that in. And the reason why I did this again on the back is so that I have room to, I'm compensating for not having enough wire to make room to get my clasp in. Now I know these are too close together, so I'm going to separate them. First I'm going to straighten them up because I don't want this wire bowing in on each other. And then I'm going to separate them out. And then I'm going to line them up with my bracelet loop. And do you see how I compensated for not having enough wire? And this is kind of another tip, everybody. What I've done here is by rolling the loops on the back gives me the space that I need, and I'll show you what I mean, to hook in. Because remember I said you need space. This one I couldn't use because the loops were rolled inwards. So I just said, you know what, I'm going to compensate for that mistake. I'm going to roll them in the other direction so that I have the space I need to come in and out of my clasp. Isn't that cool? I'm really happy that these things are happening along the way because it just it's just another way of learning as we go and it's just more cool tips and tricks, right? I learn them all the time. I love it. Okay. So now I'm going to get my one inch wire. I'm going to make a half 
a millimeter bend. So I'm making a loop. Want that to line up like a little hook. I know that's too long already, so I'm gonna go ahead and snip it back now. Then, like before, I want my hook on the top because I like that, you know, little added design element in the hook and clasp. So I'm gonna turn it over. Oh, this is a fiddly D. And I'm going to slide my hook through. And remember, you always want your hook on the back, right? Just to make my life a little easier, I'm gonna crimp that down just a wee bit, just to give me a little bit of support. Then I'm gonna come around the other side. Same thing, ooh, ooh, lost it, came out. So let's slide this all through again. Okay, there we go. Very fiddly. Okay, I'm holding this firmly where this hook is. I'm gonna get my pliers just with a little bit of gap between the outside loop, make sure I'm in the same direction, and I'm gonna fold this straight up. Then I'm gonna take my pliers Actually, my fingers, this is pretty soft, this wire. But I'll use my pliers. I'm folding this to the back, and I'm just gonna bend it over. That's what you should have. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim to where it's center. So let me turn this this way so you can see it. I'm gonna line them up. Then I'm gonna get my bent nose or needle nose, whatever you got on hand. And I'm kind of swinging this towards the back. All I'm gonna do is put it in the loop and push it down. Then I'm gonna straighten them up. Then go back inside that loop again. Just give her another little snuggie and do the same thing on the other side. And there is your hinge for your hook. Now, if this was going to be a bracelet, this is what you should have. Then, and here's another tip for beginners out there. Don't worry about not having a mandrel. I'm gonna use a medicine bottle. And all I'm gonna do is bend this around. We're presuming this is a baby's bracelet, like an infant. And I'm gonna push them together. Slide it off. And there is your hook and clasp. Isn't that cool? Now I would bend this down more right here. And then all you do is, and this is what I mean by the length. You need distance between the hook and your loop. So it's still a little short, but it's workable. But if you don't have enough distance between the hook and the loop, see what I mean how it's gonna back in to that hinge right there? So unlike this one, we've got plenty of room. It's not hitting this as it's coming out. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, 
it's really good that all the little things happened along the way because it gave us more tips, tricks, and techniques in this ancient art of wire. I really appreciate your feedback, everybody. Um, if you have any questions or comments or, you know, any information you want to give me and how you made it more successful, hey, I'm always learning, let me know. And just as a reminder, let us all be kind. Kindness travels a million miles. And as Thumper from Walt Disney said in Bambi, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me in this fabulous, very unique wire art community. And I wish for you all that you wish for yourselves. And have a magical, wonderful, fabulous day. Bye for now.